Lead Me Winter Training School Madrid 2021 Media Accessibility Training, Sign Language and Subtitling for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Organised by the Tradaval Research Group and AVLA Project at Complutense University Madrid A word to sign exact translation is not possible because any translation needs to consider the context and the cultural norms um, this is very good, in fact. This is, happens also to any type of translation, not just um, sign language. Uh, and in fact, we, from the world of, or from the area of uh, translation studies, we know that there is no exact anything. Uh, no, even a synonym is not an exact uh, word from the other one. So we are never going to have an exact translation. We're going always going to have something else that of course it changes to do with time it changes with the context it changes with the interpretation that the translator would give which is something quite interesting that the world's federation of the deaf does not mention so yes the end user may not want um, avatars but the fact is that avatars are here and are here to stay and uh, at the moment, there are two massive uh, European projects uh, for the next three years developing avatars. So the European Commission believes uh, that avatars is a solution for the production of sign language. And that is inevitable. So the next stage is um, how to do them as best as possible. Juanpe, can you put on the next slide? And you would see these avatars that they've just been um, they're there and um, you can do a lot of personalization on them. First of all, I think they are quite realistic. Um, you may think that uh, they're not, but uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, they are very humanoid style, which that was the effect. The avatar is not only good for their hands, but it's also good with the face um, representations. Um, also, interestingly, you can choose what who your avatar would like to be um, because of, uh, of your um, ethnic background or because of your age or because of your gender. So you can choose a female or a male. You can choose a, 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 any color of skin that you want. You can choose, well, not any color of skin that you want, but you have some sort of uh, different ethnic backgrounds there. You can have a short hair, a long hair, a white gray hair or whatever you want. So. I think it's, again, it is quite nice because you have an avatar that it's morphing more to the type of um, um, sign language interpreter that you would like. But also the amazing thing with it is that you can translate. It is text, speech to text, text to speech. So you can do that also between languages. This is already being used in New Zealand for COVID. Um, you would see in the web page in the third, um, that uh, you can already use them. Um, they already been used in New Zealand for COVID um, alarm for giving information. And um, so it means that we're getting somewhere. I think in this um, in this uh, school, winter school, uh, we're going to have uh, presentations um, from new other avatars being created and the translation of avatars and how this is happening. So it's it's phenomenal, the, the research that we're going to have. So if you go um, to the next um, slide, please. The other thing that uh, we're going to have to produce in, with sign language in, in these coming years is the production of um, sign language in 360. Uh, and because we are now having um, the, the new format, and this new 360 format is becoming more um, and increasingly popular, also because of COVID, um, you can have, uh, you can put the, the glasses on you and then you are transported to wherever you, they, they send you. That has proven to be amazingly important for health, uh, for the elderly, for so it is a, a format, a media format happening very quickly and developing very quickly. And very quickly, we are having a con content in 360, which it's very different from 300 uh, from 3D. And uh, you know that 3D has been many times trying to come into into um, into the normal lifestyle uh, of media. Uh, in the 50s, Hitchcock already um, did some 3D movies. 
Uh, recently, there was the Avatar movies and trying to uh, have um, 3D. 3D has never um, happened. Usually, uh, I think it's not. I think it's true um, because of um, the co there was not enough content to catch up, um, and also because it was too heavy to uh, to distribute because you always send in two images. Um, 360 is completely different, and um, you already have loads of content, both synthetically produced like video games or as videos. So this is happening, this is happening now, and this is happening more and more often. So we have to find out a way to produce uh, sign language within 360 content. And that's something that we've been developed, we've been researching for the last three years uh, in our team at UAB. Next slide, please. Um, another problem that we are researching, and uh, it's not to do with translation, it's to do more with engineering, but it is something that is very, very important for sign language. It is the quality of the, of the media. So um, in 360, for example, we had issues with the quality of the rendering, and it, was the, 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 it wasn't uh, um, particularly good, the definition. Uh, and that was bad for the face, for the face gestures. Uh, this is increasingly getting better and better and better. We don't have 4K yet, but we are getting there. Uh, that means that very soon we would also have very good high definition sign language videos um, to be also included in picture in picture uh, in 360. So that is something that we're also um, developing and researching. Next slide, please. What I want to present is digital storytelling. Uh, and that happens in 360. Um, then you have, you are like inside um, a cave, and then you have some hot spots. And in each hot spot, uh, then uh, you move into a different scene. So you are telling a story from a hot spot to a hot spot to a hot spot. And that's how the digital 360 digital storytelling is happening. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to um, to say. So the th issue is that in the in 360 digital storytelling should also be accessible, and that's what we are testing right now in a project called MediaVerse. Um, and that's what Juanpe is trying to show you. Um, so basically, uh, you are. In Can this you see that now? Yes, I hope. Ah, fantastic. Now with your mouse, you can go round. Yes. Can you go? Okay. Can you go round with your mouse so you can, people can see how you can go round? No. Yeah, but it doesn't. No, no, no. Put your cursor on the, on the picture and now move the cursor around. Ah, okay, okay. That's it. Okay, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So you have a 360 picture, and you have, can you see the little hot spots there? The hot spots, they take you to another scene. So that's the new way of a narrative 360 storytelling, okay? So the idea is that uh, you can tell a story through the little hot spots there. And the idea is that every time you go to a hot spot, then whatever you access is with accessibility in itself. This is completely impossible with the technology that we have now. And that what we have done is to create this prototype. In fact, Susie and Victor from, from the team at UAB created this video. And what they have done is to take advantage of the hotspot and create a video that is 100% accessible, though it isn't. Uh, so we understand how would accessibility work in this 360 environment. I don't know if I am explaining myself very well, but um, so we are here. And now if you look on the uh, the, the two signs, uh, Juanpe, you can press there and the sign language gets activated. And what it should be, and it isn't, is that you would go to the normal next scene from the 360 uh, story with the sign language inside it. So it would be a picture in a picture in 360 picture, yeah? So it is quite complex. Uh, so 
this is the prototype. This is what we are doing for 360 uh, environment. We have done it also with audio description. So you have an audio description. We have done it with um, the subtitles. So the subtitles are there and it depends how you look in 360, the subtitles should follow you. Mm -hmm. That is, again, this is a European project. They've paid for us to do this. So we suggested that we would do this and we were lucky and it was funded. So that is what we are developing uh, right now for um, accessibility in 360 um, immersive storytelling. The second problem, so the first problem or the first problem, the first uh, research that we're doing is to do with production. And the second research that we're doing right now is to do with the interaction, because it is very good to have these 360, um, but how do you activate the 360 accessibility? And this here, you have the first prototype that we've created of uh, a media player that is fully accessible. So you can, in fact, through, you can go online and then you can press and then you have sign language, you have uh, uh, audio description, you have subtitles, so you can choose it. You can choose the language that you go to it. So we have um, a, a student doing a PhD who is um, researching and she in fact did a, a paper on this on how to interact in um, with the content that it would be accessible in 360 immersive media. Mm -hmm. Next um, slide. And uh, one of the very interesting things about these prototypes is that they don't work as a, in a commercial way. I mean, you cannot buy it and you cannot play it anywhere. But these prototypes, they do help for us understand how it would be in the future and to draft the technology for it. And um, also, we, all, we always work with end users. So they, our research is always user-centric. So we presented these possibilities to end users, to deaf end users. And what they told us, and it was very, very nice and very surprising, is that they want to have in 360, they want to have the sign language and the subtitles at the same time. Up to now, we always thought that it would be uh, excluding. So if you had subtitles, you wouldn't have sign language um, and the other way around. This time, the end users, I, they just told us, they told us that they want both subtitles and sign language. This goes completely against um, any rational uh, viewing of 360 because you do have so many attention split attention you have the attention of the whatever is going on in the in in the media uh, you have the attention for the sign language and you have the attention for the uh, for the subtitles and the three of them are semantically loaded so you'd really have to pay attention to them the good thing about 360 viewing is that it is not sequential it is not um you can buffer, you can decide what do you watch, where do you watch. So you are not rushed through a movie like in 2D, that you are rushed through a movie and then you have to read subtitles and look at what's happening. No. So in a way, this dipping, which is the new way of reading in 360, is quite interesting because it's you decide for how long and where you're watching. And that allows you to stop and decide if you're reading the subtitles or for how long you're reading the subtitles, if you're looking at this uh, sign language or you're looking at the scene. And that is quite fantastic. And in, in fact, it just brings us, you know, to the old fashioned ways uh, of literature. I don't know if you've read uh, Cortázar's um, Rayuela, for example, that you can choose, you decide it, what does you read and in which order you read. Well, this 360 is like that. You decide, you choose, where do you go and how do you read? So it is it is uh, nothing new. Literature was there first, but it is uh, now online and is happening. And the next slide now to finish. This is uh, the research that we're doing right now at, uh, at the university. Um, we are always very happy to share everything we do with if anybody is interested. Everything we do is published uh, in open source. We also have the content that we would be happy to share if you wanted to do research with what we are creating. Uh, and if you want to come and do research with us, we would be delighted uh, if you came. 
Uh, and this, all this work that we're doing is in the within the project uh, Mediaverse and another project called Attraction. Uh, sorry, um, yes, Traction. And, uh, and that's the end of my presentation. And thank you very much, Juanpe, for being so patient and for the fantastic organization of this uh, winter school. Thank you very much. Cost, European Cooperation in Science and Technology. This video is based upon work from Cost Action Lead Me CA19142, supported by Cost. Cost is a funding agency for research and innovation networks. Our actions help connect research initiatives across Europe and enable scientists to grow their ideas by sharing them with their peers. This boosts their research, career and innovation. www.cost.eu This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution CCBY funded by the Horizon 2020 Framework Programme of the European Union.